Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Imperfect Action Show, where we talk to six, seven, eight-figure entrepreneurs about their journey, some challenges, some success stories, some tips, and really just go over how they got to their place in their business. So I'm excited today because we're here with Billy Sticker. Billy Sticker has an amazing resume. I'm very, very excited to have this, co- have this conversation, but he is a speaker, a business advisor, amongst uh, many other things. So we're going to get into talking about how to launch a business with impact. And I love that word impact because it's all about what are we doing in our businesses to create more and to make sure that we're leaving legacy. So welcome, Billy, to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm excited Absolutely. about this. Yes, very excited to have you um, today here on the show. So talk to us a little bit about where are you from and how you got into speaking and business coaching? Sure. So I am uh, from Texas and had kind of a rough childhood. Uh, Even though I'm from Texas, went to first grade in Louisiana, and uh, I actually didn't even get to finish my first grade year. I was supposed to actually do it over again. What happened is about six weeks we had about six weeks left of school. My mom shows up at school and says, Hey, we have to go. And I don't know what's going on. It's mom, you know, it's no big deal. This is back in the day whenever your parents could actually come straight to the classroom, you know? And, uh, I was part of a parental kidnapping. Like we, we were gone for four months. Nobody knew where we were. My mom left with us. We ended up in North Carolina and living in hotels and she got a job at a bar and I would make my little brother and sister, peanut butter sandwiches, peanut butter jelly sandwiches and change diapers and all this at a really young age, spent some time in foster care, eventually came back to Texas. And, um, for the most part, have been here in Texas. Um, most of my adult life, I was a youth pastor in Kansas city for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, loved that, but, um, I don't know. There's something about Texas, all of our families here. So, um, so I'm down here Never went to college. I have some seminary, um, but I I just learned a skill. I mean, as you know, you can see if you're you know watching this. There's I've got actually bookcases you can't see on this side, and those three behind me. I've given away thousands of books. I've read countless books, and so just because I didn't go to college doesn't mean I didn't get an education, right? So I just learned like what are some things. You know, that I wanted to know, and then I developed some skills. And then, how do I actually use these skills to serve other people? And we started an ad agency, uh, was able to grow that to multiple, multiple seven figures a year. I work four or five hours a week, sometimes four or five hours a month. Uh, we've built a great team, and so now I help others do the same thing you know, implement the same strategies. And we do have a background in ministry also. Um, and we do more now for the kingdom than we could when I was in ministry because we have more resources to be able, you know, that's where the impact comes in. Yeah. You know, you can do more good with money than you can without. So, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Wow, that's amazing. So going from kind of not knowing what's happening with your family to being in foster care to then not going to higher education and picking up books and saying, okay, I'm going to learn my way through reading. What, what was the thing or, or mo- what, what was the time and moment where it was like, okay, I know I want to go into an ad agency. Cause you know, there's so many different skills we can pick up. What about impact? Like kind of led you in that direction? Great question. Um, back in 2007 and 2008, I worked for a chiropractor for a couple of years and we had multiple locations and I was the marketer. And I loved it. Uh, I, at the time, I didn't know a whole lot about chiropractic. I thought it was neck pain and back pain. I didn't realize it was this really wellness lifestyle. Um, so I go to work for this chiropractor and we double the volume in both practices. It's like, I, I was good at it. And, and I realized that there's 70,000 chiropractors in the U S give or take. And a lot of them are good at what they do, not good at telling people what they do, mm. right? Uh, if you go down the street, and we all see this, uh, aside from the furniture company that's going out of business again, right? They never really go out of business, but they always say going out of business sale. <laughs> but whenever a real business is actually going under, it, it it hurts because you have to think about this. There was a 
day and time whenever that business owner couldn't sleep because they were so excited about starting that business. Right. And then there was a time they couldn't sleep because they didn't know how to keep the doors open. Mm -hmm. And if you were good at what you do, but your business is struggling, it's a marketing problem. Mm -hmm. So that's really where I felt there's, there's a need that I can help solve. Mm -hmm. And I just happened to choose the chiropractic profession mm -hmm. uh, because it was something I had experience in and I knew how to, you know, help chiropractors. And so we just started, um, I it actually started as a podcast, a marketing podcast for chiropractors. I would share tips. I would interview people just like this and it built my reputation in the profession. And then people started coming to us asking for help. And, um, and it was like, okay, what's a problem that I can solve? Like specifically, what kind of marketing can I do? Well, we can do what's going to get them, get them the best results fastest. Um, and so we started doing social media marketing. And then they started referring people and started referring people. And, you know, now we're over a hundred thousand people a month walk into the doors of a chiropractic office because of the company, because of our marketing. Wow. So, uh, we just got really good at it. And, you know, we keep, as a matter of fact, I was at a conference this past weekend. I spoke at a really large conference in Vegas in the chiropractic profession, and I got to meet one of my clients First off, I mean, we've never, we've talked on the phone several times, but it's my first time to meet him face to face. And he's been a client for seven years. Wow. So a lot of our clients have been with us a long time. Um, so, yeah. Wow. That's, that's incredible. Congrats. Like that, that's big. And you said it there in marketing being so, so important for businesses and impact and aligning impact with marketing, like I look at the two as their one, right? So right. if you understand the impact that you can create, you develop your marketing strategy around who you're you're targeting and want to impact it, it only is going to create success. And so I know something that you talk about a lot is the five steps to launching um, and scaling a business, right? And so what were those five steps that you identified that got you to the point of being multiple six figures in a year? Yeah. So it was, you first, I call it the, uh, the, uh, P5 formula. P5. And so okay. it's all, all P's. And the first one is you have to identify the problem. What is a problem that you feel confident that you can solve? And if you want to, business does not have to be complicated. If you want to make money, solve problems. If you want to make good money, solve expensive problems. If you want to make great money, solve expensive problems for wealthy people. Mm. That's business right there. So the first step is finding a problem that you can solve, but it, it, ideally you want it to be an expensive problem and even a problem that you can create recurring income from. Ideally, that's what I like to do, right? What's something that people can pay me month in and month out, right? Not something that, that you know, not like a project. I'm going to do something one time and then now I have to go do it get new clients tomorrow and new clients the next month, you know, how can I create some recurring income? Uh, so that's one of the things I like to do, but you have to figure out the problem that you feel you can serve you, that you can solve. Uh, once you have the problem, you need to figure out what product or service mm -hmm. you're going to use to solve that problem. Right? So for us, it was Facebook, Instagram, you know, other social media marketing. Uh, that, you know, the problem was new patients for chiropractors. So then we had the product. Well, now we have to put together a plan. So what, how are we going to do this? We kept our fees very, very low. Uh, whenever we first started, our fees were only $500 a month. And, um, and then, you know, we had specific things we were going to offer for that and, you know, specific ways we're going to go out and get new business. So we, we actually built a plan. But after that, the fourth P is you have to have proof. So mm -hmm. you have problem, mm -hmm. your product, your plan, and then you need proof. Like, is this really going to work? And so that may mean you have an idea and then you offer your product or service for free for a month or two because you need some testimonials. You need some case studies. Once you have proof, that proof's going to do a couple of things. One, it's going to help build your confidence. It's going to, to help you feel like, okay, this is something I can actually do. And the, it's also going to help 
build confidence in other prospects, right? Mm -hmm. When you have testimonies and case studies, uh, it's just going to make it easier for you to sell. Or the very, the last thing is to promote your, your services. So you want to be able to have those case studies. And, um, and the thing is, is you don't have to offer your services for free forever, right? Even if you're just getting started, you know, reach out to some big influencers in that space and offer, tell them what you're doing. Say, look, this is, you know, I've been learning how to do X, Y, Z. I would love to offer you my services at least for the next couple of months and no charge just to show you or whatever. Um, th- most people will take you up on that. My oldest son, he and his wife actually run the majority of our company for us. Um, and so our company is called Cairo Candy. But we all have a background in ministry. Uh, my older two kids both went to Bible college. And our pastor started asking him to do run ads for our church. And it was working really, really, really well. So he started getting ref- other churches referred to him. And... Um, and they ended up starting a business called Church Candy. And so now they do the same thing we do for chiropractors. He has a side hustle doing this for churches. And but what he did, I think, thought this was brilliant. It was very similar to what we do in the chiropractic space. This follows that that formula. He already had proof. Mm-hmm. He already had this plan. He knew you know what product and service he was going to do. He modeled it after what we were already doing. But he found a couple of organizations that had a big network of churches and a couple of people that were key influencers and said, look, this is, this is what we're doing. Is there any way I can run ads for you? Won't charge you anything. And they were like, Oh, okay. So he started doing, offering his services for free. And at the time he still had, you know, 10 to 20 accounts, whatever, but he continued to grow, started getting referrals. And now this organization, I know in the month of December, they referred 20 churches to him. They have around 75 churches on retainer now that they do this marketing for. Um, But it's because they offered one, you know, they had all the P's down, right? But they had the proof. They were doing some stuff for free to build relationships with referral partners. Um, And now they, I mean, his side business, he does a lot better than he does, you know, <laughs> in, in our company, right. but um, you know, it's following that we have a proven method, proven model. Uh, but if you think at just about any business, this is what they do. Mm-hmm. Even somebody who owns a landscape company, they solve a problem. They have a plan. They've done it before, right? They get referrals. Mm-hmm. Um, and now they can go out and promote because they've, they followed all these steps. Right. Absolutely. And I love what you said in there about reaching out to someone, whether influencer or someone you just want to work with as a test run to say, hey, I'm trying I'm learning something new. Right. Because I think that that's a moment of humility that, you know, you're saying to this person, hey, this is something new for me. I'm in the thick of it. I'm learning it. Um, But some entrepreneurs can really benefit from because I know there's some people who get in their own way. Right. Where they're like, well, I want to feel like I'm the expert out the gate and I know everything right off. Like as soon as I get into it, I, I know how to do it. I, I'll get a win. But sometimes you got to go through the process of, of testing what you're learning as you're learning and use these people as, as case studies. So I think that was a, a, an amazing way to put it. So I, t- I put the five P's there. So you all know, again, it's figuring out the problem. What product or service can you offer that will solve the problem? more specifically focus on the big problems in the, in the, with the wealthy people and then have a plan and then create that social proof, have proof that you can actually solve the problem because that, that proof will speak to you in terms of your work ethic and being able to actually uh, say that you're the expert in this area. So thank you for that. And again, it works for any business. You don't have to just be running ads or in marketing. It can work for anyone. So why was it important for you to, to build a business that was so focused on impact and how does that translate into more business growth? Uh, is it okay if I get a little spiritual? I, I'm not trying, I want to be careful because I'm not trying to be preachy at all. This is just some of my background. And so well, I want to share, I want to share a quick story. Yeah. Um, years ago, the, like this is actually before I went to work for the chiropractor. Uh, I was selling rare coins. I did that total for about 17 years and straight commission. 
at the time was making around $70,000 a year. Mm -hmm. And we've all heard of these goal setting exercises, right? You write down your goals and people I were working with, uh, you know, some of my friends, they were making six figures. And of course, if you're 70 and you're straight commission, that's the next goal, right? Is a hundred thousand a year. And I wrote that down and wrote down some other things. And I actually started praying about it. And, um, with a background in ministry, you know, there's this mindset and it's not just in the church. It's really everywhere that, you know, money's bad. Mm -hmm. Well, no greed is bad. It's not money's not bad. It's greed. And for me, my experience was, it's like, I felt the Holy spirit come down and say, okay, let's, let's talk about this hundred thousand dollars. And immediately I was like, uh, I don't want to be greedy. All right. You know, God, like if, if my cap is 50, if it's 70, whatever, I would rather be poor in your will than wealthy out of your will, you know, like whatever. And he was like, no, no, no. You have that your goal to make a year. I want to challenge you to make that your goal to give away a year. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for people to do that. Right. And it totally raised my level of thinking. It's like, well, hang on a second. Can, can people give away a hundred thousand dollars a year? Yes. Actually now I'm friends with people that give away seven figures a year. Right. And now that we've hit that, like, that's my goal is how can we grow to give away seven figures a year? And there are so many causes that are important to us, different churches, um, we have some dear friends that go deep in the bush in Africa. I'm talking like it takes them eight hours to drive. Like once they get to their, they get there, they have to drive eight hours in the middle of nowhere. And the ministry they're doing is just unbelievable. Digging the water wells and all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff. And they're sharing their stories. And I'm thinking, I absolutely have no desire to do this. <laughs> like what they're eating and stuff. And I'm like, I, how much do you need? <laughs> How can I, you know, I right. will gladly help send you, but they love it. They absolutely love going over there and doing this stuff. And so to be able to do things like that, um, here recently, my wife said something to me. She's like, Hey, we need to talk. And we've been married 27 years. So I knew it wasn't like a bad, we need to talk, but, <laughs> you know, uh, it, it was just the way she started the conversation. I remember having this feeling like, somebody, somebody needed resources and we were going to be able to help, mm -hmm. you know, that's actually not where the conversation went, but I remember being excited, like, oh, there's an opportunity and we're in a position that we can help, you know? And so that's what, that's what the impact's about, mm -hmm. right? Whenever our company first started growing, I remember when we were like at 20,000 a month, uh, and it was like, wow okay, like we did this. There's just, we, there's just a handful of us, mostly me. we got a couple of part-time employees. Um, uh, but as we started growing, well, then more and more money had to be put back into the company. Right. And for like several years we were growing, but the income that my wife and I were taking wasn't growing. Right. Like it was staying the same. It actually kind of dipped down a little bit for a while. And I remember having a talk with my wife saying, you know what, even if, our income never goes up. I still want to grow the company because we're helping more chiropractors. They're helping their communities. We're hiring more people. We're giving these people opportunities to work from home, make really good money. Like everybody is being blessed because our company is being blessed. Mm -hmm. Even if we don't, even if our income like is capped right here, I still want to grow this as big as we can because it's increasing our impact, you know, more opportunities for people, for these doctors, for their community, like we're still helping everybody. And then eventually we, you know, got some new systems and stuff worked out where our income kind of caught up with everything and, and is growing with it too. Um, but you should take your eyes off. Don't make your success about you make mm -hmm. your success about your clients. Right. One of my coaching clients told me one time, she actually had a pretty decent business. She's making 15 to $20,000 a month. And, but she said she doesn't feel worthy. Mm. All right. And, and that's a real thing. Yeah. And so what happens is you begin to self-sabotage. It's like you, you do well, and then you start thinking, yeah, but I'm really not, you know, who am I to deserve that? Whatever. And she kind of self-sabotages and then goes back down 
And I told her, I said, well, that's because you were making all of this about you. Mm. You have a business that's helping other small businesses. I want you to turn your focus from you, turn your focus on their success. Right. How successful can you help each one of these businesses? And then even more, like how can you go find more of these businesses to be successful? If you focus on just helping all of them succeed, then your success is going to be a, just a byproduct of the success you're helping other people get. Absolutely. So you're being selfish whenever you're focused on yourself. Right. Right. Focus on how you can help other people. Uh, and then all these things, you know, are added. Right. That's great. And that, and that is true impact, right? It's how can you create a business that one is lucrative so you can keep the lights on and you feel Absolutely. Like you yeah. a comfortable lifestyle, but it has to be bigger that, than that. And I'm glad you said it. And I was talking to an entrepreneur yesterday and she has the same mindset where she said mission focus, not milestone focus. And it's like sticking to what, what is the, what's the purpose? What's the why behind wanting to create a business that you can scale to a billion dollars or whatever your, your goal is um, and keep it where you're sustaining that, you know, sort of passion, if you will. Right. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure. And you can probably speak to this. Actually, I'm not pretty sure. I can't even say that because I'm not at seven figures yet working to that. When you get to a point of, you know, seven figures, you're hitting the target monetarily. The impact is kind of what keeps you focused, would you say, on keeping like, what's the next step? Like, is there ever a moment where you just plateau and you're like, we did it, I'm comfortable, I'm just going to coast? Or like, is it the impact that keeps you going? Well, I guess it's a little bit of both. You've got to keep new goals. You know, and this is a good thing, like my wife and I do in our marriage, is we try to sit down and especially on our um, anniversary Mm -hmm. Like, Hey, what are some new goals we have for this year? Because that's, that's what keeps you working together towards something. And even in business, it's, it is easy once you hit a certain level to kind of coast mm -hmm. or to rest on your laurels. Right. And say, you know what? Like all the bills are paid. I'm getting to go travel and do these things. I don't have to keep the foot, you know, my foot on the pedal, Right. And you don't. So that, that is one thing that you kind of have to fight against. But whenever you do focus on like just what you were saying, the why, like what, what's the impact that I'm being able to make here Be and put it back on that, mm -hmm. you know, and even with your team, it's good for everybody to be on the same page and everybody to have the same goals. Um, it, it can make it fun, right? Um, one of the things that we did, we were at this big conference this weekend, and there was around over 3,700 mostly chiropractors at this event. Mm -hmm. And uh, we ended up having a booth there also. And we had probably seven or eight of our team members. You know, we took to Vegas and, uh, and they're taking turns working our booth and stuff. And so we're like, look, your goal isn't to sell anybody. Right. I mean, they're not here to sign up for our services. They're here to get their continuing education credits and things like this. But, you know, we'll have their people are going to hear me speak. They'll be coming by the booth. Schedule calls. Our goal is, you know, for you guys, schedule calls. Um, and we made it fun. Like every time somebody scheduled a call, they would, we had a, a thread that, that we were doing and they would, you know, ring the bell. You mm -hmm. know, hey, I got another one. I got another one. I got another one. And we just, we just made it fun, but everybody was on the same page. Um, and then now they have goals and they know why our company, you know, why we do what we do and uh, they under, understand the importance of it. Um, and then we also really, really, I think we do a fantastic job building culture in our company um, and really reward our employees for doing well. Um, and it makes them, take ownership even in the results that our clients get, you know? Um, so. Yeah. I love that. And it's creating the, the impact from the inside out essentially. Right. Um, and, you know, I have two decades of management experience in my background. And so leading people and understanding that people work for people, they don't work for companies anymore. Absolutely. So like, yeah. 
how do I, you know, consider this person that's putting in so much effort and so much work towards my vision and my dream, which yes, I've influenced them to take part of that and own it as well. But how do I keep them going and keep them motivated? So I love that you said that impact from the inside out. And the other great thing that Billy said, if you guys didn't catch it, go back and rewind it. If you are in a relationship or a marriage that has been, you know, long term, sitting down and taking moments to align on your vision and your goals together and just taking a step back and saying, Hey, what's next for us helps with the longevity. So that was, that was nice. I love that. And segueing into, you know, impact and, and creating an impact on a high level, bigger stages, you've actually obtained two comma club awards from click funnels, uh, which congratulations for that. It's like the Holy grail for online marketers and entrepreneurs um, what was it like obtaining that? Was it a goal for you that you always were, you know, shooting for, or was it something that kind of just happened based on putting in the hard work and a dedication? Um, no, I think at first it definitely was a goal. I remember, you know, as our company started growing, I remember doing the math one day. It's like, hang on a second. If we continue at this rate in the next year to half, well, we should be at seven figures. And I remember running and telling my wife, look, this is how much we've grown so far. And, and like, this is very attainable. I think if we keep doing it, this is where we, you know, what we're going to hit. Uh, and then this year we should do over four, uh, over 4 million in revenue. And it, it's, it was pretty exciting. And you can actually see three of them, three of the awards back here. Mm -hmm. And I could technically qualify for more. Uh, but after I had three, I was like, eh kind of get the point. No, I, I'm running out of wall space to get, <laughs> to, right. to get other ones. And I don't, I don't mean that in a proper way, but it's like, eh, okay. You know, I'm, you don't want like the click funnels dungeon necessarily. in the house. Uh, Yeah. It's like, you know, this, this, is, <laughs> this is pretty cool, but it was exciting, you know, and it does, you know, build some credibility and it kind of goes back to the proof, you know, the five P's we talked about it. Um, the people that know what it, what it is, it's kind of like, Oh, okay. That's pretty impressive. But even for us, you know, it kind of builds, you know, build your own confidence. It's like, check it out. We did this. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And again, congrats. I know ClickFunnels major. So if you are, if you are watching this podcast and not familiar with ClickFunnels, definitely get familiar because it's helped a lot of businesses and entrepreneurs really max out. So um, in terms of the, the business coaching and consulting, um, what is something that you've identified as like a common denominator for the people that come in and turn out to be the most successful and like actually keep that uh, track and that pace to getting more results and taking imperfect action to make their businesses grow? Being coachable, right? Mm -hmm. Having, yeah, having the desire to serve, other, serve others um, and then actually be coachable. Uh, it, it is frustrating one of our, you know, we've had clients, you know, coaching clients that um, they say they want one thing and then you give them instruction and guidance. So look, they, this is how you can go out, just do these things and you will get these results. But then they don't want to do those things. You know, it's like, uh, well, I mean, okay. I, you know, I can't make you go do these things. Yeah but I know that these are the things that are going to help you get out of your way to get there. But, um, but you really have to have a heart for others. You know, I think if you're selfish, you can go out and find some, you know, some success. It may not last long, but that's the difference between greed and ambition. Mm -hmm. Greed is gain at the expense of others where ambition is gain at the benefit of others. So, um, you know, I think having that heart to serve and then just being coachable, right? right? What are success does leave clues. I mean, it's been said over and over again, and there has never been an easier time in world history to be successful, right? Like people have already figured out the answers and it's all over YouTube. I mean, that's why you're doing this show, right? Like this is how you, these are people that have gone out and built multiple six figure, seven figure businesses, eight figure businesses. Mm -hmm. And they're telling you, this is what, this is what we did. So all the answers are already there, but the difference between knowledge and wisdom is application, right? You can go know all the stuff, but if you don't do the stuff, 
the Bible actually calls us a four letter F word. It says we're a fool. Mm -hmm. If you know what you need to be doing and you don't do it, and then you complain, you know, that's, that's on you. Everything right. you need to know, every opportunity, like it, it, it's there. It's out there today. The knowledge is there. The information is there. The world has become smaller through the internet. You can build an audience. You can find people to serve. Um, you just have to figure out which one of those problems that they have that you want to help solve and then put together a plan and go after it. Right. I love that. That was great. That was great. And thinking about ministry, because I, I find it interesting that you have such a big background in ministry. Not interesting in a sense like, oh, it's interesting that you're the person that was in ministry. I don't mean it that way. But when it comes to faith and believing, because we hear that a lot, right? And when it comes to being an entrepreneur, it's have faith, keep the faith, keep the faith. How much has faith weighed in in terms of your success and like really maxing out with this business and being able to go through the hard moments to, you know, teach your son how to get to this level, keep it in house, but be able to get on stages and impact people in a way that is is empowering right and it's like you can do it keep the faith have you had that moment where it was like you had to go back and really tap into the faith um because i think sometimes people throw it around and say yeah keep the faith keep the faith but they don't really have the faith if that makes sense yeah that's that's a great question so i think a lot of people get confused and they think that god's wisdom i mean god's currency is the u.s dollar mm -hmm. right and we hear these preachers talk about it you know hey i I committed so much to the building fund and opened up the mail and got a check from the insurance company I wasn't expecting. And that's, that's grace. That's not necessarily faith. Um, but I believe that God's currency is wisdom that like he gives us ideas and information and then favor whenever we start implementing these things. And so I think for us, that's where a lot of it has come in. Uh, I'm a part of some other masterminds now and, you know, some of like one in particular in the agency space, there's two or 300 other agencies in this, uh, the one group I'm in and we have one of the largest companies there and we had built it large before I ever even joined the group. And I look around and so many things we do are so different than everybody else. Mm -hmm. And, but it's, I didn't have anybody to learn from. Right. There were problems we faced in our company and I would just pray about it and say, God, how do I handle this situation? And then I would get these ideas and it was able, it allowed me to scale a pretty large business. It's, it's not the biggest. I mean, there are tons of companies that are much, much, much larger than us, but it's a pretty solid business mm -hmm. and it's not even, it's not a job, right? It is a business. It works. I can take off for the next two months and come back and our business will be bigger than it is right now mm -hmm. because we put the systems and processes in place that I believe God gave me wisdom on how to structure, you know, even how we pay our employees, we pay our staff based on how many accounts they manage. So they get paid, Let's just say Facebook, for example. Uh, if they have 30 Facebook accounts, they get paid $125 for each account they manage. Uh, if some of those are doing TikTok, they get an extra $125 per TikTok account. So we've got people working part time, you know, well, you know, 30 hours a week, give or take, uh, mm -hmm. making four or five, six grand a month working from home. But if somebody cancels, it's like, ugh, that hurts because that affects them. Right. Right. So it was, it's almost like a commission based, you know, um, pay scale, how we did our staff. But if they have referrals come in, if one of their doctors sends in a referral, they can take the sales call. And the reason we do that is because they're the reason that doctor's referring because they're doing a good job managing that account. That doctor refers somebody. There's a good chance that this new person's going to sign up. They get a commission. And they get to manage that account. So it grows their, you know, their income, things like that. Uh, I believe was just, was just me keeping the faith, if you will, you know, just kind of going to God and saying, Hey, um, I do get to speak at our church a lot. And one of the things I said recently, we were just talking about giving and I said, you know, this is whenever you give, you are partnering with God in your finances. And if you're going to partner with anybody in business, 
like, wouldn't you want to partner with the one who spoke the stars into existence? Mm -hmm. Right? Like that's the best business partner ever. Uh, and then it's just kind of sitting back and it being able to listen. Okay. Here's the problem. I need wisdom on how to best solve this problem for everybody involved. Yeah. That's good. So God, God's wisdom is the currency. You all heard it, heard it here first on the Imperfect Action Show. His wisdom is the currency, not necessarily God being the currency. So, man, that was that was great, Billy. A lot of good information. Make sure you all understand that there's five ways to scale your business by utilizing impact. So, again, I'm going to just go back and repeat them very quickly. If you missed the first half of this episode, please go back, rewind, and watch it and get some more knowledge but figure out the problem that needs to be solved. What product or service that you can create that will solve that problem, create a really good plan and then have the proof that you can actually get it done. And don't hesitate to go out there and find people that you can work for pro bono for free so that you can get case studies in and work on your social proof. Cause everything is about, you know, not only what you know, but how do you show what you know? And people want to right. know that you care first before they even care about what you're doing. So always go back to the why and creating that impact. And Billy, that information was amazing. Anything else that you want to leave the uh, listeners with on this episode that we may have missed? Any final thoughts? No, that that was it. And thank you so much for having me on. And uh, hope this really inspires some people to go out and and reach their potential. Yeah, it, ins it definitely inspired me to to learn more and get the wisdom because the knowledge is great, but the wisdom is where it's at. Billy, where can we find you and get more information about your services and um, just to stay tapped in with you? Sure. I am actually most active on the Facebook. Uh, we have a free group called The Blessed Entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Uh, and where I share, I do a lot of free trainings and stuff in there. And then you can also, I hope it's okay, I plug this, The of Blessed course. Entrepreneur. You can get a copy. Um, it's on Amazon. The Kindle's only 99 cents. Uh, and we're working on getting the audio book out here within the next few weeks. Amazing. So you all heard it here first. Go to Facebook, find Billy Stick on Facebook, and go grab his book. It's on Amazon and Kindle, correct? Yep. Awesome. Thank you so much, Billy, for all your wisdom. Again, that was impactful for me. So everybody watching, I know you got some valuable information in this episode. And if you just tuned in, this is the Imperfect Action Show where we talk to six, seven, eight-figure earners about their journey. So make sure you go ahead and rewind this episode and watch it from the beginning. You guys have an amazing rest of your day. We'll see you on the next episode.